Live pictures right now as you're looking at a pro Hamas group uh, there in New York City, just side, side of Columbia University. They have promised to take over Columbia University in New York. They're turning the campus into what they're calling a Gaza solidarity encampment. The protests have happened in response to the school's president, who testified on Capitol Hill. There was a hearing today about the rise of anti-Israel sentiment on college campuses, the rise of people wanting to kill Jews and talk about wiping Israel off the map. Somehow that's become acceptable speech in America. Columbia's president, Dr. Namat Shafiq, took a strong stance against anti-Semitism, kind of, sort of. Uh, in stark contrast. Certainly it was strong in contrast to the December testimony of the Harvard and UPenn presidents. Neither of them still have a job, so she was trying to keep her job. Fair enough. Today's testimony only seemed to make the pro-Hamas protesters on Columbia's campus more determined to spread their message of annihilating and killing Jews. Listen in to a little bit of both today. We are all up, up with liberation. Up, up with liberation. I find those chants incredibly distressing, and I wish profoundly that people would not use them on our campus. I, I wish that even more after the many, many conversations that I've had with our Jewish students when they tell me how they feel when they hear those words. They find it threatening, they find it frightening, and uh, it's abhorrent and has uh, and has no place in our community. By Younger Sargon is here, opinion editor of Newsweek. Her new book, Second Class, How the Elites Betrayed America's Working Men and Women is on a bookshelf near you and should be purchased immediately. Uh, it's a great book. Congratulations. Thank you, Evelyn. As we are watching now what's happening, not only on America's streets, but on America's college campuses, do you think we really understand the level of hatred towards Jews, number one, that exists, and number two, that's permissible? I have to say, I, I find the discourse around this really alienating. Um, on the one hand, of course, I'm offended by a lot of the anti-Israel sentiment that you're seeing proliferating on college campuses. It's not pleasant to walk past a group of people calling, you know, for the end of Israel and so forth. Um, on the other hand, the idea that as Jews, like, we can't handle this, I find deeply deeply offensive. And I don't understand why we're not teaching students, you are not made unsafe by a bunch of chanting 20-year-olds, because that is an option as well, right? We can call this out. We can say, this is gross. I don't agree with this statement. But you are not made endangered by people saying things that are gross. No, you're not made endangered by people saying things are gross. To be fair, there are times that it has crossed the line from saying things to doing things. And I think I think this would be the question, right, is that we've been told all on and on and on, there is a, a First Amendment right to free speech, but then there is also a right to not feel endangered, and that perhaps, and I think is what you're picking up on here, it's been applied very differently, say, in the 2020 world of BLM than it is being applied now in the 2024 world of anti-Israel. This caught our, our eye, especially, we talked about it a lot yesterday. The University of Southern California, USC, canceled the valedictorian speech because she had uh, posted and liked things um, on Instagram uh, and social media that was, shall we say, um, not really leaving Israel a lot of room to exist. Here she was on <laughs> CNN. Take a listen. One of the items in this post uh, calls for the complete abolishment of Israel. Is that a position that you endorse? If you're asking me if I stand for human rights, if you're asking me if I stand for equality and unequivocal and unconditional right to life for all people, including Palestinians, then I'm not apologetic. I believe in what I believe, and it is because of the people around me that I've met at USC, the classes that I've taken, the professors that I have learned from that have led me to look at the world in this way. 
okay. <laughs> um, and look, we said a lot yesterday that USC is the real cowards here because they said they're canceling the speech because of safety, not because this person is a virulent anti-Semite who has talked about destroying Israel. This is the question, though. Do colleges have a responsibility to treat speech the same? Okay, if you can't say this, then you can't say that. I want to ask you something, Leland. Do you think that that person believes that America should exist? I That's promise you she doesn't, right? Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact driven, unbiased coverage.